Hey, Marissa. And anyone else back there still cares about us? This is the end of day 15. Or as I like to say, still day one local time, since we're tightly locked. You'll recall yesterday's expedition into the sunny side didn't go well. We came back to the Terminator. One of us can't handle hiking in the heat, Carson. I was fine. Anyway, today we decided to use the drone for a more relaxing exploration of the sunny side. The part near the Terminator, and for hundreds of kilometers further in, is nothing like the empty desert the whole sunny side appeared to be from orbit. Near here, it's more of a semi-tropical jungle. Almost like the Arboretum if the heat and humidity controls are malfunctioning. Fortunately, it's not dense everywhere, so there's plenty of spots we can see down through the treetops. The drone cameras identified a variety of animals. Some of them we've seen around our camp, but a lot are unique to the hotter climate. I think the best analogy for this place is Chile. Instead of the Andes Mountains, here it's the fixed daylight terminator that gives us these long vertical lines of unique climates and the ability to traverse such a variety of climates horizontally in a matter of a few hours walk. Personally, my sweet spot has the sun slightly below the horizon. Lee likes it hotter. The thing that's totally different here from Chile is the wind, of course. Around the Terminator, it's always so windy. No doubt you can hear. Glad we don't have allergies. Anyway, the drone is proving really useful despite the wind. We've been surprised by the wind tolerances. Tell Larissa she did a great job on that redesign. Tomorrow we're hoping the conditions will allow sending the drone out ahead of us on a northward trek. As we get closer to the pole, of course, we're expecting the climate bands to widen as the axial tilt keeps the sunlight indirect. In the polar areas, you can actually experience a stationary night and day cycle on this planet. It just takes months and only happens in specific regions. It's remarkable how the plant life adapts, so we're expecting to see some unique variations on life in such areas something more Earth-like in terms of being adapted to a concept of seasons that have different light levels. Well, the auto-generator report has the species scan details, and I'm feeling sleepy, so I think we'll sign off here. I hope you figured out a way to capture and assemble these transmissions of ours, because I don't think we can boost power or narrow the transmission beam any further. Anyway, good night, and sweet dreams to you people up there in our future. The scene you've just heard is a transmission that plays in the background and gets talked over in the third episode of 253 Matilda Season 3. I thought I'd give you a chance to hear it unobstructed because it gives you an idea of the sort of exploration that's been happening between Seasons 2 and 3. Please help us pay the people who bring these stories to life by joining the Kickstarter for just a dollar. Click the Kickstarter link at quietplease.org 253.